Using an outhouse doesn't have to be a terrible experience and you can make them quite beautiful and functional. Number one, I wanna show you how I prefabbed this outhouse and brought it here on site and reassembled it. Number two, I wanna give you some tips and tricks to how to make your outhouse experience so much better. Your outhouse experience doesn't have to stink. I'm a big fan of color and I gotta tell you what, I really like black because in a landscape, black completely blends in. If you paint something black, it turns into the background or the shadows of an environment. I really wanted these particular outhouses to blend into the environment. So I decided to stain them black with a green door. And it really uh, fits into the environment. So from afar, they're just really blendy. Plus I just love the green stain. One important aspect is you're gonna to wanna to use treated wood for your base, and that's gonna prolong the longevity of your outhouse. One thing that's good to think about is maybe leaving a little bit of gaps in your boards and your decking. This is still really green wood, so it's gonna shrink even more, allowing these gaps to widen. But you know, when you've got a lot of snow or rain, it's nice to have some of this drain off. And also, I left enough of a gap underneath here, so this, if there is material, on the decking, it's gonna float right over. You don't have to have it exactly perfect. So it's good to leave, you know, three quarters to half an inch under the door so that when you swing it out, it won't get caught on something on the deck. We like to use just these simple uh, wood latches that just spin with a screw to keep the door closed. And I know somebody's gonna say, well, what if somebody can lock you in there? Yeah, I suppose so, but like, unless you're like, going to be using these at a kid's camp or something. I mean, if it's for your own use, I really wouldn't worry about somebody locking you in if you're just going to use this at your own place. There's a hook in case you want to hang up your coat if you've got a long coat or something. But look how light it is. We love the clear roof. It really brings in the natural light. And then you come down to the foam seat. Foam seat is so important. Um, we use these all winter long, and that foam is instantly warm. You can clean it pretty easily as well, so we like that. And see that we've got treated wood down here. The rest is framed lumber, and it's just plywood. I like to keep my extra toilet paper up here. You have to protect it from the squirrels and the mice, so you've got to have it in some kind of a plastic container. This container will eventually contain some feminine products and some wet wipes and stuff like that. Now we keep all paper out of the hole. All paper and anything else goes into the wastebasket. So you can really extend the longevity of your outhouse if all the paper goes into the wastebasket and you get rid of it. As soon as you start putting paper in your hole, you're going to start filling it up quite quickly. So for the longevity of your outhouse, we prefer not to put any kind of paper in the hole. Now, when you talk about smell and covering up, it's nice to have a bucket of sawdust in the outhouse or a little bucket of your wood ashes from your wood stove. And you can periodically sprinkle some of that on top of the deposits and it will cut down the flies and it will cut down on the smell, adding some nice organic um, composting material in with your waste. So that is a good way to keep the smell down. Of course, you can put candles in here. This happens to be one of these uh, kind of cinnamon scented uh, brooms that you get around the holidays. And you can do the same with pine cones. Um, it smells pretty good in here. Uh, obviously this is a new outhouse, but you don't have to also skimp on any kind of a design. There was some stamps and markings on the plywood. I just didn't want to look at it. So I just decided to put some, a little bit of touch of my own on the plywood. Otherwise, this is untreated plywood on the inside. There's probably gonna be some comments about ventilation. You certainly could put a hole in the back and even get like a solar fan to vent out. You could put some kind of just a screen vent on the back where the hole is, that's up to you. We never have done it. We just, you know, we, we tend to live in more Northern places, it's cold. And 
again, when you're putting a little bit of sawdust or wood ashes on top of your deposits, occasionally doing that, it keeps the smell down and it keeps the flies away. And it, we just never felt like we've needed ventilation. So that's the story with that. That's up to you. You can always put a hole in through the back venting out if you'd like. It's a good idea to think ahead if you plan on moving your outhouse periodically. Put it on 4x4 four four skids with a little bit of an angle cut into the front so you can hook onto this outhouse with a skid steer or something and you can pull it forward over a new hole that you've dug. Otherwise, you're going to have to get really creative in how you're going to move this outhouse to a new hole. We've had to do that once or twice. All right, here's something really important when you're building your outhouse. I like to put some kind of a guard on both sides. You can see I've got this leftover poly. I dropped my pencil down there. What a bummer. For obvious reasons, you can keep your outhouse wood dry and you can clean these two panels off if you need to. It's really important because P will definitely hit the front. And if you don't have this, it's just gonna absorb into the wood and the whole outhouse will just smell like pea wood. Staple some plastic in there or you know use whatever you've got but you want to waterproof this a little bit. The other thing you're gonna want if you're using this in the winter is a piece of foam. It makes it so much nicer. You definitely don't want to be sitting on a cold seat in the winter. This is just one inch foam. You can get it from any uh, big box store, you know, lumber store, Home Depot, Menards, whatever. Trust me, it's awesome. The other thing that we think is really important is a lot of natural light. I hate going into an outhouse that's just a dark hole. So clear polycarbonate on the roof makes all the sense in the world for a good outhouse experience. And it's really easy to install. You install this with the rubber gasket screws and it makes a wonderful clear roof that lets in all the light. You don't have to worry about that. Now, the one thing I don't have on this outhouse yet is a motion activated solar light, and that will illuminate this area whenever someone gets nearby to use the outhouse. Now you can see here, I have nothing but sand here at the top. This came from the bottom of the hole and this probably will eventually cave in. Sand is not a good, it's really easy to dig through, but it is not good for holding the hole. So we probably will eventually have to move this outhouse and it could be easily reassembled. It's all put together with screws, but uh, yeah, we may have to move it if it caves in. Maybe this is more like what your outhouse experience has been like. This happens to be on a property we bought. Of course, we haven't used it. It's pretty janky. First of all, it doesn't make sense at all. It's really dark. As soon as you get in here, completely dark. We have, <laughs> yep, we have a, a dining room chair for a toilet. And then this goes down into a 55 gallon barrel. And then over here, for whatever reason, we have a porcelain sink because, you know, there's no running water. So I don't know what the story is. Makes a great squirrel nest. Lots of dead bugs, a very unappealing place to do your business. This is what a lot of outhouses are like inside, just dark. They've got some ventilation and the only light above the door. This is horrible. This is... This is not where I want to go to the bathroom. This one's up on blocks and they just put basically a 55 gallon barrel. There's nothing wrong with that, but you know, I would bury it. There may be times where you would need to use a barrel and that would be if you're in permafrost or in that sandy situation where I'm in over there, you might want to put a barrel, but only if you have access to get that thing pumped out. If you're on some kind of a road system, and you can get a septic tank truck in there to pump out your outhouse every year, that works. We had to do that in Fairbanks where we lived because we have permafrost there. So our outhouses can't just be a hole in the ground, it's through ice. So you're gonna have melting, you're gonna have shifting. So it's gonna be an ongoing process, but
but that system with the 55 gallon barrel will work as long as you can pump it out. Otherwise, you're gonna have to figure out some way to move that. Or the other thing you can do is pour a vault. You could also do that. Again, that's a, that's a setup where you're gonna to wanna to have access to some kind of septic truck that can come in and pump out your vault. But you could pour a concrete vault and that would work too. More like that's what you're gonna find in the national parks and in the state parks where they have poured a concrete vault and that's just permanent. But when you're off grid, that doesn't always work. You have to get really creative. Um, you could probably crib up a hole that was suspect to collapsing with just some wood cribbing and it would just stay in the hole and get buried back in with the hole once it's filled in and redo it again somewhere else. But just some things to think about. The 55 gallon barrel does work. Um, you just gotta be able to pump it out or figure out a workaround for it. Shout out to AnnaWhite.com from my hometown in Alaska for this set of plans. Let's get started. I'm building the base here. I'm building the entire project in my garage at home first before I take it to the off-grid property. Having a nice level work surface and power tools makes it a lot easier to get this thing done. So I'm cutting everything that I need and assembling what I can actually physically carry. The rest will be put together on site. The base and decking is made of treated wood for longevity. Now I'm actually prepping to build two identical outhouses. So I'm doubling the materials I need and doing all the cuts at once. The roof will be a shed roof style. So using my miter saw to get those angle cuts is really helpful. Again, I did all the cuts together for both outhouses at the same time. The next step is to assemble the walls. Each wall got additional bracing, which would make a good shelf. Next, it was on to the door. These are just one by tens in a nice pattern, making a beautiful door. Now the outside of the first outhouse was going to be rough cut lumber that Dave had cut and we had extra of. So that was gonna be free. It was really nice to use this. I just loaded it up in the truck, brought it to the garage, and then I cut it to fit on each side of the wall of the first outhouse. The next step was to jigsaw out that, that angled piece. It's just a little easier to do with a jigsaw. Now each side I did not screw in place. That was going to take place on site. There's no way I'd be able to lift this wall and move it myself with all of the, the boards attached. Here we go. With the wall framing assembled and all of the boards cut, the door made, the base constructed, it was time to load everything into my truck and take it to the site to be assembled there. Once on site, I located the spot where I wanted the outhouse and started digging. The size of your hole should be determined by how big your outhouse is, but also how hard the digging is. The opening for this outhouse is relatively small, but I did want a deep hole. I was aiming for about four and a half feet deep. That's pretty good. It's about as deep as I can get out. It's getting really hard to get this out. So I think that's where I'm gonna land the plane here. That's not all it's gonna land in here. <laughs> Once I was satisfied with the hole, I moved the base over the top and of all things, I forgot my level. So I had to eyeball it and then adjust with some dirt as I thought I needed it. Again, I was just eyeballing it, but it's just an outhouse. It can always be lifted up and adjusted a little bit at any point. That'll do. With the base where I wanted it, it was time to add the decking boards which is easy work since it was already cut to size. Just needed to screw them in place. Next, it was time to set the walls in place and screw them down to the base. Adding this one by six to the front helped to stabilize the structure and keep it somewhat square while I added all of the boards that would encompass the sides.
I brought along some extra trim material in the form of 1x6s and used my battery powered circular saw to cut to size. This would trim out around the door, which was the next step, setting that door in place. I made sure and set it on top of a 1x so that when I opened it, I'd have enough gap underneath the door to float over any snow, leaves, or any other debris that would accumulate on the deck. Next up I needed to stain the outside and I chose black. I wanted this thing to disappear in the landscape. Next up was to build the bench seat and cut the hole for the opening. I was just freestyling it here but you could also just get a toilet seat and trace around it. But honestly we prefer to use foam and when you do use foam make sure to bevel the edges so it's nice and smooth where you sit down. I wanted the door to blend in with all the jack pine and white pine we have on this property, so I chose to stain it green. Next up was the roof. Cutting some polycarbonate here with my tin snips and installing it with gasket roofing screws. A few finishing touches and voila! So this one is all done. Turned out good. The black is what I really wanted to blend into the environment. This black, I mean, it just disappears in the landscape. Look at how nice that turned out. Beautiful little simple outhouse. Everything you need. Really, you know, a <laughs> little, little bit of, little bit of brookiness to it. <laughs> I like it. Turned out good. The second outhouse was built in the exact same manner at a different location on the property. Just top my shovel. That's, that's a good deep hole. It is really, really sandy. It's like a beach, man. Straight up, I could make a sandcastle. Crazy, which is not good for a hole. So hopefully it'll last a little while anyway. It's a nice deep hole. Oh, I got my level again. Darn it. Had to huff material a little farther for this one, but it's all worth it in the end. It's a good workout. And for this outhouse, I decided to use plywood on the walls. So I did assemble all of that back in my garage and huffed the walls to the location and set them in place. It does make for a faster build using plywood and it's really handy. Another staining job and finishing touches. She was good to go. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and got a few tips and tricks that you could use of your own. I'll see you in the next one. This girl in the woods, she gone. Oh, don't forget to get outside and get happy.